in tea leaf reading, there's obviously quite a lot of different ways of doing this. Um, and it is called Tassiomancy and, and, and is, uh, or comes from Asia. And um, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. I'm doing the Turkish version. Now, in, the Turkish version is normally done with coffee. But since I don't share my coffee, uh, I'm doing the Turkish version with loose tea. In the Turkish version, you read the tea, but it tells you two different things. One half is your past and the other one is your future. So what normally happens when you do tea leaf reading, you um, boil the kettle once, you never use the, the water for someone else. <clears throat> again, but again, didn't want to tell you all this. Important thing is, tea leaf reading, this is how it works. You, you make a tea, normally the person drinks the tea because you remove the tea first. Right? You tea in, make them a drink, and then they, they drink this, and the idea is that they understand the messages better. <clears throat> so I'm using this, <clears throat> excuse me, this jasmine green tea. But the Japanese actually, sorry, the Chinese actually call this gunpowder tea, um, simply because they have invented gunpowder, and I think it just sounds great. <laughs> so. And that's really in short how it works. So you, you put the tea in, you make the tea, and then once obviously this is, this is um, wet then, put it on the plate, and then you just look at the shapes and it tells you something. That in short is tea leaf reading. Astro dicing really is a very new thing. The idea is you look at astrology and the planets and some houses or, or a house or two Planets and star signs come with traits, character traits, and um, tendencies, if that makes sense. And what you do is you have three dice that are 12 sided and they contain the planets and the star signs and 12 numbers because there's 12 houses, one for each star sign. And in order to find out what people need to do, there's a couple of ways of doing this. You either ask a question, something you really want to know, and then the dice will be rolled to answer this, or you just roll them and then the combination of what you just um, rolled will tell you something that you need to do right now. So this is how this works, it's just very simple. Right. And then all I would need to do is look at this right, and then make assessments based on that. So that's astro dicing. Um, it is a little easier than, let's just say, going into really deep into the star sign because you have a combination of different energies, which also makes it easier. Um, when you have three energies, makes it much easier to get messages. Right? So let's look at rune casting. You have this board here and then yeah, these, these runes, there's 24 runes, have a different meaning and depending on how you put them there um, determines which way you're going with regards to looking for um, meaning in them. And you know, so there's a, what is called a shamanic spread, which is only three runes and then there's other things like the runic cross, which is two on each side and then four here. So in in on the whole, so the idea would be to ask a question that is really important to you, right? And then the runes themselves are placed in the order you, you normally draw them. So that will also tell you where to go in the future. And then it's not important how you read them now. Obviously, there is an order to things so that makes sense depending on the, um, the spread, as, it, as it's called, <clears throat> you're using. But... The interesting thing about this is that this is really, really old. And ever since I've been looking into runes, I have a new guide. His name is Larsen. And um, no idea where he's from. Obviously, he sounds quite Swedish to me. But I have, an, have a guide who is basically directed to help me with these runes. But the idea about rune casting is to look into one issue, one issue only, and then really pick it apart. Animal guide readings. Every animal is called the teacher in Native American lore, 
And the idea was and is to observe them in the environment they, they're in and then see what can we learn from them and what are they doing that helps them in their lives and how them, can we then translate this into our lives. So normally when I do um, um, a reading depends um, on the on the question or if it is more general reading. It's quite simple, it sort of goes into the direction of tarot where you basically trust your guides to give you what you need and then you just say ask them for three guides. And then I've been doing this for quite some time, so sort of the thing I do the longest is this um, these animal guide readings. And then every animal here tells me something. So here we would have the we would have the um little the, the the parrot, the crow and the crocodile, for instance, and that combination would tell me something. Also, the animal in the middle is the one we pay the most attention to, simply because the two on the sides support the energy of the one in the middle. So you can go much deeper into a topic or into the energy of an issue and look at it. So that's in short how I would do that. Sound therapy is a very old modality and it is quite a, a, a big modality because it is obviously divided into so many different tools from Tibetan singing bowls to frosted singing bowls to drums to tuning forks to vava pipes um, to shakers to triangles and they all can be again subdivided into specific notes and some of them therefore can help with different chakras and um, I also do this distantly simply because you know um, especially in times of lockdowns and stuff this works quite well differently and then um, someone uh, I would have a conversation with someone about what they're looking for and also I would tune in to see what I can pick up and then would put the tools my guides tell me about and they usually tell me about it sort of an hour before it actually starts so there's different guides that I have uh, for this and um, they would then ask me or direct me to put them in a certain way so I can be good at the healing and then I would just basically sit there and play this for people. But this goes deeper than just relaxation because we are beings of vibration and you send the healing vibration to the person in question and sometimes you have another bowl for instance and you actually do not play for quite some time before you play the other one because sound may dissipate audibly and it's still energetically there so sometimes in the silence is still healing going on so that's why a treatment can easily take 45 to 60 minutes depending on um, the energy of the person I would do it for. Numerology, the idea is that the name you are being given and the date of birth together and separately have energies and blueprints and imprints onto them if that makes sense and that gives you an idea sort of who you are while you are not um, the person that cho chooses your name you could inherit someone's name and the energy of that name might not be that great and you have to walk around with it because even if you had um, um, another name for instance or you have a, a pet name um, that would give you a certain or a different energy here it would not change your imprints so who you are is basically determined by what your full name is as you, because you translate it, so to speak, or transform it into numbers. And then the idea is you can look at these numbers and there's so-called core numbers. So you look at someone's soul number, um, then their destiny, you know, why are they here? Um, there is maturity numbers, which can sort of tell you at, at roundabout at what age people can reach that sense of calming down a little right so all this is in your numbers and numerology um, is also uh, um, 
from the ancient Greek um, and it was brought to us by um, Pythagoras who was a mathematician which makes sense because obviously you transform these number these names um, into numbers that in short is what numerology does and one of the interesting things about it is while you can do it for one person you could also just collect the so-called core numbers of the person that asks for it and you can compare them to the numbers of their parents and their children and maybe the partner to see is there a reason why I met them or did I just come here to do my own thing and this can be quite interesting.